Hi, everybody, and welcome. And today we're going to be sharing a little about overcoming fear of sales and barrier to sales. And I'm wondering, Kylie, if you can lead us off and maybe kind of share some of your experiences of uh, selling or of clients you've worked with. And I think, you know, if there's a version to marketing, then there's uh I don't know, 10 X aversion to actually selling, like selling is one of these like things that people just really want to avoid at all possible costs. Mm. Yes. And I used to have a strong, strong aversion to sales and a big fear of it. And I didn't have an aversion to marketing, which was the funny thing It was right. like, I'd build out <laughs> these beautiful marketing campaigns and put so much time and so much effort into them. And then when it came to ask for something, I, I would leave it up to the person in terms of like not even putting in a call to action in my copy, just hoping that if I told a good enough story, they would come back and buy. And I was just like really nervous and anxious about it. But I think the first thing in terms of building a first, a tolerance to sales and then a love and a passion and excitement for sales is becoming confident in what we do. So you're really good at something. And when you know how good you really are at it and you really deeply understand the transformation that people get when they work with you, it's hard to be afraid of sales in that space because now you're serving the person by offering what it is that you have to offer. You're being of service to them. Let's say that I offer a transformation of being able to market in a way that doesn't creep you out. And all of a sudden in taking one course with me, you're now able to have a process for the rest of your life to get clients. Don't you think that I am in some ways even a little bit obligated to get that into your hands? And if I am confident that I can do that and that I can give you those processes that work, then I'm no longer afraid to sell to you because I'm not even selling to you. I'm offering you something so powerful that it would be so hard for you to say no to it and for you to be excited about buying it in the first place. Yeah, that's such a good point. Marketing's role isn't really to create demand. It's to find things that people need already. And then to the marketing's role is to find those so that you put your product in front of them because they already need it. And so if somebody already needs it, the hard selling that you don't, you, you don't have to convince them to buy it because they already want it and need it. And so the, the selling kind of dissipates if you have an aligned product that people already need. Yes. And one of the things that I like to think about in terms of that alignment is instead of having a sales conversation or sales copy that is focused on getting a yes, focus it instead on getting the answer that is true for the person. I'm just as happy to get a no as I am a yes if it's true for that person. So there's a couple of things that I do with people that I walk people through in order to help them feel empowered. First of all, if they're on a call with me in the first place, let's assume that we're doing sales calls, then they're already expressing some level of interest. So now it's time to make a decision. And one of the things I like to ask them is, what is your goal? Like, what is it that you want to accomplish through this program? And what have you tried in the past to get to that goal? Like, what does that goal mean to you? And what have you tried in the past to get there? Because you know that if they're talking to you, they have a problem. And if they have a problem, chances are, unless they live under a rock, they've already tried to solve that problem in other ways and it didn't work, which is why they may be a little mistrustful. They're not mistrustful of you. They're mistrustful of their past and of their present circumstance. So that's, right. the, fir that's the first thing you wanna know is get to that goal. Then you want to find out like, what, what is it costing you to not achieve that goal and let them tell you, you're not telling them they're telling you, and then you just move them through. There's other steps involved, but you just start to move them through not having their goal to the possibility of having their goal and really matching what it is that you're offering to the steps that are going to take them to achieving that goal. And I will say one more thing. One of my mentors says actually several of them. There is no good story without a goal. There is no story without the pursuit of a goal. So this is really just another form of storytelling, but you're doing it in a sales format. Yeah, I think it, I think it's a good point. And I think when you're talking to somebody, especially for if you're selling like higher price goods, often the first couple minutes of a call are really important because you want to frame it 
because often you'll hear somebody say, oh, I'm just here to get some more information. And normally my response to that is, oh, that's great. But what I'd really like you to do is come to decision, you know, and so let's, let's figure out if what's the best decision for you at this point. So kind of coming back to what you said, it's, it's not about me convincing you that this is better, good or not. It's for you to decide whether it's right for you. And it empowers the person to make the decision, you know, versus you like them seeing you as trying to convince them that one way is better than the other. You know what I mean? Um, and then you can just say, is that okay with you? And then if they say, yeah, let's, let's do it. And then you can be in a conversation where you're just helping them to make the best choice. And if the best choice is for them to go work with somebody else or not to do the program or wait, then, then, then that's what you want for them. You know what I mean? Uh, and then if the best choice is, um, for them to work with you even better, uh, because then you can create the transformation and, and you, you know, it's, it's time well spent. But I think that the, that framing, that, that idea of like helping them to make a decision versus making a sale is, is, is so key because what we hate about salespeople is them trying to convince us that we need something that we actually don't need, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, nobody wants a salesperson trying to force something down your throat that you don't need, or you already have five of in the cupboard that you don't use. Or it's, it's a new method that's really not a new method that doesn't work or whatever the promise is that it isn't going to come through. But it's what we hate about salespeople is the it's, it's sales for the sake of the sale versus the right product and transformation for people. You know, it's such an important thing. And it's, it's interesting how just one little small concept like that if you just go into your calls or go into it, it, it reframes everything. And then it's like something in like your psyche can just like relax and be like, oh, I'm here to help them make the best decision for their life, you know? Yeah. And the final point that I would make is it's really about confidence. Like if you're pricing, if you feel that your pricing is too low or too high, let's fix that. Right. If, if you're scared of your own pricing, then you have to get it in your body. I'll tell you, I had this woman that was teaching me sales, like, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, maybe eight. And she was wanting me to sell a $50,000 program. And I was like, too afraid to do it. Right. And, and so she had me get a hula hoop and hula hoop all around my house, yelling 50, <laughs> 50 K 50 K over and over again, because she knew that that would rewire my brain. Is that a TikTok video now that's gone viral? <laughs> I wish <laughs> I should do it. But, um, she basically was having me reprogram my neurology so that I was comfortable saying it, because if you're afraid to say it, people are going to hear that fear. So you right. really want to, before you get on a call or sell on a sales page or a Facebook post or Instagram video, whatever it is, you really want to practice getting that price into your body because when you're not confident, they're not confident. We have a $20,000 offer right now. And I was talking to a woman last week and she said, how much is it? And I said, 20 K just like, I didn't hesitate. I didn't change my tone. It was like a strong tone that I used. And it was just, there was nothing in my voice that was nervous about it. And then she wasn't okay. nervous about it. Right. She wasn't like, Oh my God. And she said, I really want my company to pay for it. So I'm going to get back with you. And I had no doubt that she was going to go do that. I didn't need to say like, yeah, well, I'll make a payment right now. I, I know that she's going to go to her company and they're going to say yes, or they're going to say no. But the way that I was able to deliver that with confidence, that's something that you also want to be able to do, whether it's 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, or $500, you want to be able to look someone in the eye and stand in your value and say the price and not be scared, or you can be scared, but stay strong and stay confident. Yeah. This is such a big topic. I mean, I just, the, the mindset, if you can learn to if you can learn to stand in your worth and your power and also like uh, know that, like you said, have the confidence and the certainty that you, that you can deliver on the results and that you'll do whatever you can to create the results that those people want to create the transformation or to fulfill on the promise, you can make stronger offers. And um, I would say like throughout our time working with people, especially our hiring clients, often we'll be doubling the or tripling the prices of the things they charge. Because often rather than work on the confidence and the certainty and increasing the offer, what people do is they lower prices. Mm -hmm. And then it, it kind of like, a, it's like a downward um, spiral 
where you kind of have to work on the core thing. But, and then once you have it, you never want to go back because you attract the nice thing is you attract clients who are better clients for you who do the work and then you create more results. And then it's, it's like, it's like a, it's like a flow thing when you learn to step in your step into your power as creating offers and, and saying the price without, like you said, without flinching and just like, look, I know it's worth it. And, it, and you know, it's worth it because you've designed an offer that like over delivers and, and that you'll do anything, you know, that you, the system and you will do anything that you can do to help that person get results. Then you can say it, you know, right off the bat. So, yeah. Love it. So go sell people, go sell something <laughs> right now. <laughs> It's a good time. Like this is the beginning of the year right now, if you're watching this and um, they're like, people are reaching out for help. I, I like the end of January and February and March are great too. And really there's no bad time to sell, but this is a pretty, it's a pretty fun time. Cause most people have, most people like join the gym already, but they're, they're just, they're already failing and they're not consistent or they need the personal trainer or they need the diet coach or they need the relationship coach um, or they need the, to learn how to get their products online. That's what we do, you know? So, um, it's, it's, it's often really difficult to, um, do it yourself. You know, I really, when I'm on a, I'll just, and, and I'll end my piece with this. I, I, when I'm on a call, I, in kind of in the back of my head, I have this script that like, I know a lot of times it's not always the case, but I know a lot of times, if the person doesn't join, say one of our main offers, I know they're not going to do anything. And I know like, I'm going to see them a year from now and they won't have taken a lot of action. Or if they tried to take action by themselves without the help, they, they will have wasted a lot of time and a lot of energy. And I, cause, cause I know that the systems that we've designed and the experience we have creates faster results for people, you know? And so like, I kind of feel like it's a, like a, it's almost like a sacred selling obligation to try to, to do everything I can to get that person to work with me. Because then I know like three months from now, like they'll have their program launched or they'll have it created or they'll, they'll restructure their business or all the, all the magical things that we do when clients work with us. And then if that opportunity is missed, I feel like it's a, it's a gap. And I just haven't explained to the person like, how, how we work and how it all works and how like we can literally like transform their life with us, you know, as mentors. And so I just have that kind of like feeling in me. And, and so it's, 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 uh, it's a little bit tricky because, because I, I personally, it, it, it can feel I I have to hold back a little bit because then it feels needy. Does that make sense? Like I need you to work. It's not so much that I need you. It's more like, I want to invite you and I can see your potential. I can even see more potential than you can even see for yourself. And I want you to own that. And then, and then, and then, and then if that person says yes, then, then things speed up. I know things are going to speed up in their life. So the world's a better place when you can get people to work with you and transform their lives. So bye, bye everybody. everybody.